Hey there everybody, Mazarok here, and today we've got some more changes to Guardian Druid coming up in 10.1.5. There was another spec tree kind of reshuffle rework, and we are going to get into it though. Before we get started, I am sorry for the quality of my last few videos lately. We've had a lot going on, my hot water heater broke, I got kids sick in the house, Premiere Pro completely updated and changed around the whole layout, layout for my editing, and it's been a whole relearning thing. I am sorry, I promise they are going to get better. Also, please do like, comment, and subscribe. It goes such a long way to helping out the channel. Uh, Patreon link down below if you wish to support me directly. Uh, like My kid is sick today and ho homework from school, so there is no coffee and key stream. But I am going to be recording a lot of videos today. I have a lot of ideas I need to catch up on. And a lot of those are going to be recorded, edited, and put up on Patreon early access before they come up on YouTube. So if that's something you're interested in, Patreon link down below. There's also shirts for sale. Guardian Druid. Uh, Sad Bear, I'm the tank too. I only do dungeons fully erect. Blood DK, I'm the healer now, among others, merch down there. There's a Discord link for a wonderful community full of great people. And Twitch, come on by, check me stream. I play all tanks on stream pretty much all the time. It's such a fun time. Okay, Guardian Druid rework. So we do know that the shit that things were getting shuffled around. Dream of Scenarius is being put uh, more up high. Innate Resolve is getting 150% buff based on, uh, based on missing, missing, missing health and has Frenzied Regen immediately has an extra charge, which is really, really nice. And then we kind of go down the middle here uh, towards all of the Maul Ray stuff that we already know. But Galactic Guardian was in this place where Thorns of Iron is, and it now it has been swapped around. Thorns of Iron is now in this row right here, which is not terrible. You can easily skip it if you uh, if you want. I at first when I saw this, I was like, "Oh no, I don't want Guardian uh, Galactic Guardian being a little bit lower." But one of the things they did here that I really, really, really like. Let's just take some points here to kind of go down. Is they added extra pathing. So let's take Circle of Light, Death, and Death. Let's grab our our. Incarn, this is no longer a one path down. Once you grab your Incarn, you can easily grab Rays or Rage of the Sleeper or both directly from the Incarn node. This is really, really good pathing and opens up a lot of a lot of builds and a lot of build potential. Because the problem with Rays and Rage of the Sleeper as it currently is live is you have to sacrifice a lot to get there. And that's not necessarily fun because just to take Rage of the Sleeper, you gotta go through some talents that are unsynergistic with the build and not, not always the most pleasant, but now they are very easy to grab. On top of that, one of the problems that we had with the initial rework that I did not like was Pulverize was up here and you basically had to get Pulverize to go down to Ursoc's Fury. They put Pulverize as a bottom left capstone and they moved Rend and Tear and Untamed Savagery all the way up here, which is really, really nice. So that way you can easily grab it and have easy synergis, uh, synergi, uh, synergies with Ursoc's Fury, but also Flashing Claws. So Flashing Claws, as a two-point talent, is kind of... It's okay on live. It's not the best, it's not the worst, it just kind of is there. It adds a little something, but it's not the best talent point you're going to spend. But now, Thrash stacks two additional times. Now, uh, if you read the tooltip, yeah, okay, perfect, they fixed it, because last night it just was two. It is one point, uh, it is one stack of Thrash per point put in the Flash and Claws. So being able to have five stacks of Thrash on mobs is really really good and is gonna be a lot of fun to play with but as you see here as i'm going down we can easily still grab galactic guardian if we want if we want kind of a hybrid add some moonfire if you want to go full physical you can still absolutely do that and kind of go around here on this side of the tree and just really have an absolute blast with it Right? There's a lot of things that you can do with this tree that I really, really like and how you can move around, place what you want. I'm seeing a lot of build potential here that unfortunately just wasn't there before, right? I'm just going to put some stuff in. I don't think right now, I don't think it really matters where I put it in. I'm just putting stuff in to put stuff in. There are There is going to be some builds that are coming up, but I'm really, really excited for everything that Guardian Druid has to kind of offer they're really taking feedback into account, right? Pulverize was one of the big problems and the placement of that, and they moved it down. What now? 
On the flip side of things, what I think is incredibly sad about this tree as well, because we are going to give some constructive criticism, is that Pulverize and Lunar Beam are two complete bottom row capstone traits that you're pretty much never going to take. Like, there's just no reason to. Pulverize needs a rework where it needs to not consume Thrash Tax. Although, with Flash and Claws and Thrash Tax being up to five, Pulverize isn't going to be as much of a devastating loss. It's not going to be super terrible. And let's not forget, one of the things that they did do as well, they separated Raze and Maul. So those are no longer, like, Raze is no longer going to replace Maul. One of the concerns that we had was whether the Vulnerable Flash, Tooth and, Tooth and Claw, Vicious Cycle, if these talents were only going to affect Maul and not Raze, and I'm happy to announce they have updated the tooltips and have gone on, beat on some dummies, and whenever you get a, to a Tooth and Claw proc, Everything like that, it works with either or. So the choice is actually yours. Adding a lot of versatility into the damage kit of Bear. Do you want to do some priority single target damage? Do you want a certain mob to die quick? Or do you just want to blast for AoE? This is a choice that you can just bring into Mythic Plus and have no qualms and no real downside. It's just which button do you want to press when it glows? Which is a really, really good change. The pathing options being added to this are incredibly nice. I think that we're going to see some more build diversity, which is also really, really good. And kind of where they're moving things along, I'm kind of happy with it. I am sad Galactic Guardian went all the way down here, but I can also understand why the change. Galactic Guardian is kind of the central focus of the Laser Bear build, right? That's kind of where you're getting your big Moonfire damage and healing and rage generation and everything like that. And putting it on the opposite side of Ursox Fury, which is not as not as much not as much doing the rage generation side of things, but Ursox Fury is kind of your main mitigation, right? You build big Ursox Fury shields to kind of avoid taking damage. So it's gonna be one of your biggest healing. And they kind of perform a lot of the same role in that that regard where your Moonfire healing for Laser Bear is kind of a big part of your active mitigation. It's just kind of making sure that you're always to, uh, you know, re-healing nice and quick as much as possible. Or Sox Fury is, you know, it makes sense to me. As much as I want to be playing more Galactic Guardian, and it's not to say that you can't. You probably can. There are ways to take it in more hybrid builds. I've been kind of playing around, and it's not difficult to take. And getting Galactic Guardian with Twin Moonfire on its own is really not a bad a bad hybrid build option if you're leaning towards certain other playstyles of bear. So really, I think Guardian Druids have a lot to look forward here. Yes, the magic damage mitigation is still kind of an issue here, but the thing is, is in Season 2, we have far less magic damage than what we had in Season 1, right? Season 1, it seems like every dungeon had some sort of really big magic damage that was really problematic. And going into Season 2 in the Dungeons with Bear, I have yet to really feel super in danger. Like, I'm not like, holy crap, I'm dying all the time, or like, I'm constantly having to worry. I'm good. Like, I've been having a blast going into Keys and not having much of a problem. And just really, like, I have to say, as for tanks going into every single dungeon, I think Bear was one of the smoothest transitions from Season 1 to Season 2 for me. And it kind of really works, and their tier set is going to absolutely amplify a lot of this build for the end of 10.1.5. So I'm really excited to see what they change next, where they're going with the feedback, because they're obviously listening to feedback. It's, it's incredibly obvious that they're doing this, and Nate Resolve is going to be incredibly good for bears as well. There's a lot of good stuff here, and Bear, and Bear should be very excited for what's to come. That is it for my video today. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. Uh, thank you to my patrons for making videos like this happen. Have yourself a good one, everyone. Happy tanking. Bye.